welcome to the Voice of Hope live stream. We trust you'll be blessed and you're being blessed by these messages. To ensure you do not miss out on any of these, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Facebook page or Instagram, or visit voiceofhope.church. God bless you. The choice to be a Christian is a radical one. It requires an entire change of life. It demands some uncompromising positions that are contrary to common sense. It means that you will always accept the fact that you're a sinner, that Christ's death is the only help available, that there must be a constant search for a new heart, and ultimately that there can only be one person commanding your life. Because your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You no longer trust in your own perceptions or criteria while making decisions. Instead, your choices follow the parameters of the Bible, which is Jesus' word. One cannot have Jesus while rejecting his word because he and his word are inseparable. Solomon says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh, and strength to your bones. Then he uses the financial life to suggest a way through which we may exercise our trust in Jesus and submission to his word. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. To honor the Lord with first fruits means that we give our best to God first before meeting any other expenses. Always remember, limited submission generates limited blessings, while unlimited submission brings overflowing blessings. As you return your tithe and give your promise, ask God to give you a submissive heart and to help you to be willing to say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. May we put our desires last and God first. Competition and ten children made it to the top. The king said to them, I have one last test, and whoever comes to the top will be my adopted child and heir to my throne. He gave each child a seed of corn and told them to take the seed home, plant, and nurture it for three weeks. The ten children took the seeds home and plant to plant their seeds. In one home, a girl and her parents were very sad when the seed failed to sprout. The girl had diligently done everything required, but she failed. Her friends advised her to buy another seed and plant it, but her God-fearing parents who had always taught her honesty refused. The day to give account to the king came, and the ten children went to the palace. 
all the other nine children were successful with their seeds. The king went to each child asking, Is this what came out of the seed I gave you? And each of the nine boys and girls said, Yes, your majesty. The king would nod. The king would nod and move down the line until he came to the last girl in the line who was shaking with fear. The king asked her, What did you do with the seed I gave you? The girl said, I planted it and cared for it, your majesty, but it failed to sprout. The king went to the throne holding the little girl's hand and said, I gave these children boiled seeds, and a boiled seed cannot sprout. If a king or queen must have one quality, it must be honesty, and only this little girl passed the test. We live in a society where people will do anything to win. God sometimes does not give us things because he wants to teach us a lesson. Sometimes it's because God wants us to work and pray harder. My mother always says, Tell the truth even if it is uncomfortable. At least you will have peace once you have told the truth. And we can always work through the problem together. Or you can try harder next time. I pray that you and I will be faithful always. Please be faithful to God no matter what life throws at you. Even if life gives you a boiled seed. Let us pray. I pray that you and I will be hope, hopeful and truthful and accept when we win or when we lose. Amen. like to invite you on this holy Sabbath day as we read together from the book of 2 Kings chapter 6 and we are making use of the first seven verses. The Bible reads as follows. The company of the prophets came to Elisha and said, look the place where we are is too small for us. And in verse 2 the Bible reads, let us go to the river Jordan so that we can each cut some poles and build a place for us to stay. And he said, you may go. In verse 3, the Bible reads, then one of them said, men of God, would you please come with us? And then he said, yes, I will come with you. In verse 4, the Bible reads, and this is the one of my favorite texts in the Bible, verse 4 in particular, and he went with them. When they got to the river Jordan, they began to cut some trees. Uh, verse 5, as one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh no, my Lord, he cried out, it was borrowed. Verse 6, the man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Verse 7, lift it out, he said. Then the man of God reached out his hand and uh, took it. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes where you are or to take your prayer position as we seek the Lord in prayer. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, we are grateful for this Sabbath day. Father, we are grateful for life in Jesus Christ. We are grateful, Lord, for the health that you have sustained us with. 
We are grateful, Lord, for all the provisions that we have enjoyed. And yet on this beautiful Sabbath day, we kneel at the feet of the cross, waiting for you to speak to us and change our lives. We understand that when God speaks, he does not speak for information, but for transformation. And therefore I ask that whoever shall meet your word today like a double-edged sword, let it tear the soul so that all of us may be brought at the feet of Jesus. And I pray that you may give us hope in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible gives us a beautiful passage in the book of 2 Kings. It talks to us about the sons of the prophets. These were prophets in training, and we understand as we read deeper through the scriptures and other uh, books uh, that there was a place in the Jericho, in the old Jericho, there was an area there, a place called Bethel, and there in Bethel, Elisha had collected those who were sons of the prophets. The Bible does refer now and then to the sons of the prophets when it speaks of those who were under the guidance of a senior pastor or prophet like Elisha in this case. And the Bible tells us that right there at the place where they were preferring when they were being ironed out for the gospel ministry, you would understand that a calling is not enough, it still needs to be sharpened. And this is the idea of the school of the prophets. And right there when Elisha, the man of God, was leading out these young people and guiding them into the word of God, guiding them on how to listen to God, how to follow God's instruction, how to become a good example, and all other beautiful things that go along with the calling of the man of God, there came about a problem. And the problem that was identified and agreed to on, and I love how the scriptures articulated in a very unified manner, that when they came together to analyze their situation, they all agreed that the place where they are is too small. If you are reading the passage, you will agree with me that we find this as the main problem, or rather the reason why the passage comes to be is that the place is too small. Now, after those of us who are doing strategy and other disciplines that we are busy doing in our lives, you would know that a lot of businesses, a lot of ideas, a lot of careers, a lot of opportunity have arisen and the purpose of that is to solve a particular problem. The problem that we are having is that the place is too small. Therefore, the solution that has been found at the school of the prophets was that they will go to the river Jordan so that they eat, cut some trees and that they bring them back whatever. When you are looking at 2 Kings chapter 6, you find a unified body of Christ and I urge you today that wherever we are right now, even though we are unable to meet in the house of God as normal, but I need you to understand that we contribute better in the mission of God with a unified mind. We work better in the house of God when we are thinking along, when we are helping each other, when everybody is seeking to do their part in the glory of God's name, when everybody is seeking to execute in their spiritual gifts so that the men of God and the women of God may be edified. And the Bible tells us that uh, they looked at their problem, and I love the analysis of that. They said, the place is too small. You are aware that somewhere else without the Spirit of God, they could have said, life has become difficult since you have joined us. Others would have pointed the problem to the leadership. Others would have criticized the systems. Others would have cried of the old things that used to work. Others would have spoken about how different they would have led out the sons of the prophet at the time. But look at the analyzed version that the scripture presents to us. That in unison, they all agree that the challenge is not the addition of others at the place of God. The problem is not the new members that have joined them. The challenge is neither not in the old members that are here that are seeking to retain their old ways of doing things, but rather the issue is that the place is too small. I wish to share this with you, uh, that 
as you contribute in the house of God, as you do your part in the plow, as you put your hands on deck to ensure that lives are saved, that many are brought to the Savior, watch out for ill talk among us. Watch out for the talk that can divide us. Watch out for the negative energy that some of us may be bringing in that will frustrate the work of God. Rather, it is easier for us to leave the man but play the ball. And that is why they all agree that the challenge is the place that it is small. It is very clear the place is too small. It is our problem. The solution is that we should go to the River Jordan and let all of us, not some, but all of us cut a tree. We understand that God has given us different strengths. We understand that God has empowered others more than others. We understand that some of us have the gift to think. Some of us have the gift of planning. Some need to strategize at the back, but some of us need to put our hands on deck. Some of us must literally be present on site. Some of us need to bring some tools. Some of us may not be there, but our contribution, our ways of encouragement, our financial ed additions, all these things that we are putting together, they work together for good, for the mission of God. Not some of us, but all of us must uh, bring a pole so that we can build a place to stay. According to 2 Kings chapter 6, it is understood that even our physical strength is not the same, but there is no excuse in making a difference. God understands that others can cut up to five or even six poles. God understands that others with limited or no resources at all may not even cut any, but when you are reading the text, it simply says, those who can do more should do more. For those who have more, more is expected from them. And for those who have the least, the more are there to cover them up. So that all of us come together as a family of God, we are able to build a place uh, for us to stay. A place where God is glorified. A place where God is lifted up. A place where Jesus is the center. A place where the captain, Jesus Christ himself, is in charge of his church. But I love what happens there just before they have identified the problem, they have the solution. But look at the plans that are in play. They then say that before we go to the river Jordan, let us ask the men of God. They are seeking first for permission, but more than that, they are also seeking for presence. That apart from you permitting us to do this, we also need you to be there. My friend, God is not a part-timer in our lives. We do not only seek permission from him in the blessing of a new job. We keep him all the days of our lives. My friend, God is not only there when we say I do to our marriage partner. He is there to sustain us and to keep us all the way. My friend, we do not only seek God only when we are in trouble. We, we seek God all the time and this is what I'm getting here. They are enjoying the presence of the man of God such that permission alone is not enough. But will you please come with us? And we heard the answer there, Elisha saying, yes, I will come with you. What a beautiful team of the schools of the prophet. What a beautiful and a blessing to the nation of Israel and Judah that they had prophets who were unified in spirit, who were unified in voice. In the last days that we are at, I pray that myself and my colleagues can learn from the sons of the prophet to speak positive about the men and women of God, to speak well about the mission of God, to speak well in ensuring that God's work is done, to speak well about others, for we are great not because of ourselves, but by even elevating the greatness of those who are around us. I wish that the spirit of the prophets may come through the church of God, that wherever we are, our little lambs must ensure that Jesus lives among us, that the little church that you are as an individual contributes 
well in the bigger church that we are when we are together, that our homes where they are become a temple of the Holy Spirit, that whatever it is that we are doing together, we may become sons and daughters of God who are ready to proclaim the gospel message of the soon coming of Jesus during these days. But I have realized in my short life, we cannot do this when we have negative talk about our own mission, about our own biblical understanding in social media and other places. I have realized that we cannot do this when our criticism is only ill and is not advancing the work of God. I have realized that it will become difficult, my friends, to unify the work of God when in our hearts we are not unified in spirit. And I wish that we continue to learn from the sons of the prophets. But the story continues that as they were busy working, the Bible says that they got to the river Jordan. It is that part, verse 4, that I told you that I love. Whatever plan that we have put in place, whatever idea that is there, whatever resources limited or otherwise that are there, let the gospel work continues. Let us begin to make a plow for Jesus' sake. And I remember that as a pathfinder, I used to say, for Jesus' sake, I will always do my best. I plead with all of us young people, I plead with the youth, I plead with the men and women of God, I plead with the children, that let us all do our best in our corners. Let everybody get on the plow. Time is no more. Jesus is about to come. It is time that we shake this world with love. It is time we shake it with his grace. It's time we shine the love of Jesus in and around us. Let us tell everybody that even COVID-19 is temporal. Only Jesus is permanent. Let us shake the world with hope. Let us raise the voice of hope that in Jesus there is hope. In Jesus he is our refuge and strength. And the Bible says, our ever-present help in the times of need. I wish that wherever you are right now, send a message of love and care to someone who needs it. Wherever you are right now, remind your colleagues that there is someone who cares and that someone is Jesus. Whoever it is that has tested positive or otherwise, tell them that it is not the end, for the end will only happen at Jesus' command. Right now, you have no reason to fear, you have no reason to lose hope, because Jesus is still on his throne, God is in touch, and soon and very soon he shall come, and the Bible says he shall not be silent. In case you thought he is quiet about your issue, it is said that soon and very soon he will sort it out. And the singer simply says, we will understand it all in the by and by. While they are busy in the plow, while they are busy cutting some poles, you can look at what happens here. Those who do not have access went out of their way so that the work must not stop on my account. They went out to even borrow from those who have more or from those who are not using them. Such is the work of God. God has not given us all the tools in our, in our disposal, but God has hidden some tools in the hands of others that in our humility and unified effort, those who do not have will find from those who have. And thus we discover that as they were busy chopping some trees, the unfortunate happened that the axe head fell into the river. And we heard a cry from there. The young man simply said, Oh, my Lord, it is not mine. It was borrowed. A revelation of things that we would have not have known if there was no problem. I know how problems expose us. I know how trouble exposes us. I know how falling into a pit exposes our unpreparedness or even exposes our preparation for that matter. Right here, the young man simply says, had, had the axe not fallen into the river, we would not have known that it was borrowed. Exposed at workplace, exposed working for God, exposed to doing your best, my friends. You are aware that we are solving a problem of a place that is too small. This is another problem in the middle of a problem that we are busy sorting out. Such is life. And Job simply says in chapter 14, verse 1, 
that a man born of a woman lives only for a few days that are full of trouble. And Mark simply says, what shall it profit a man to gain it all but lose his own soul? And in some place he says, the one who shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. My friends, some people are discouraged as we speak. There is somebody listening to my voice today who says that I do not know what to do next. I was doing my best for Jesus' sake and for his name, but my axe head fell into the leaf. What do we do? When the axe head has fallen into the river, what do we do, my friends, when the only brook of the living water has seemed to be dried up? What do we do, my friends, when the last flour and oil that we have simply make up the last meal and there is nothing else that will come back? What do we do when we get off the bus, but this time as you go back to your home village, there are no groceries of food to show that you have been at one place. For tears and shame are simply telling us that while they thought you are doing your best and working for your family, they do not know that you have lost your job some time back. There are things that happen in our lives, and when they happen, they seem to expose the very core of our humanity. What do you do when you wake up one morning and the one who said I do until death do us part simply says I cannot do this, I need to walk out. What do you do when you receive a call like my brother that your child is no longer breathing at school? What do you do my friends when your ex has fallen into the river, when you've lost your mojo in the slang language? What do you do when even in your career you've lost your cutting edge? What do you do when in your business there are no orders, you cannot invoice anyone, when things are not happening at all, even the invoices that are sent out are seemingly not getting paid, when the earth head has fallen into the river, I don't care how much you chop, but I know that there is no effort. For an X, it is not an X without an X head. There are people who are doing their best. The sun rises and it will set when their lives are still the same. Somebody woke up this morning on a holy Sabbath day looking forward that perhaps the prayer they have made God has heard and maybe today they will have a meal to do, to eat. If somebody uh, sent out their CVs, that's all they do. And they have even gotten used that they will not get any reply. You walk from interview to interview, but there seemingly is no hope. I have brought the words according to the scriptures that do not lose hope, do not give up. When it seems like you've lost your cutting edge, when it seems like the only best days in your lives are only in the past. You see, my friends, some of us, we have a lot to say beautiful about our lives, but the reality of our times is that some of us, the best around us is only in our history. But for now, there is nothing good to show. When your ex has fallen into the river, you do sleep on the most expensive bed, but it cannot buy you sleep itself. When the ex has fallen into a river, we do sleep in houses, but in deep down in our hearts, we know that they are not homes at all. When the exile has fallen into the river, the digits are right in the bank account. But there seemingly is no joy, no peace in our lives. When the exile has fallen into the river, even the young ones, even the children, have lost their respect towards you. When your exile has fallen into the river, you sit alone wondering, where is the father of this child? When well, now I have to fend for them alone, but I did not have a baby alone. When the ex head has fallen into the river, you ask yourself, it feels like, and in the words of the Negro spiritual, I have just become a motherless child and very far away from home. But the Bible simply told us, because of a good decision made at the right time, the man of God was healed. Praise God for the man of God. Praise God for the one with the Spirit of God. 
Praise God for the one whose God is their guide and captain. Praise God for the one who, who knows that his word is a lamp on their feet and a light on their path. Praise God for the one who knows a God who does not sleep no slumber, the one who watches over Israel, the one who will never leave you, no forsake you. And when you are looking around you, you may not see him with your eyes, but that's what make him God. That's what make him special. That's what make him different for any other gods that you can point a finger at. He is God, his name is Prince Emmanuel, he is Jesus. He is the rock of ages. He is a strong foundation. He is an anchor. No ship will get lost when he is connected. He is God in prayer, in simple prayer. You can touch him. You can call him. You can connect with him. And the Lord will see you through. And the man of God was ready to ask a simple question. All I need to know is where did it fall? I, I don't care how you got here. I don't care how many problems you have. I don't care how many years you have been sick. For some of us are good at explaining our 38 years at the pool of the fest. I do not care how long has it been. For 12 years you have been, you have been bleeding. I don't care how much you have suffered. The question is simple this morning. Where did it fall? I do not care from which house were you born from. For some of us feel so small because our family name is not that great. I don't care who gave birth to you. I don't even care if you still have a father or mother. I don't even care if they were there or not. The simple question today is where did it fall? Uh, I'm not looking to know if you've ever worked in your life. I'm not interested in the balance of your bank account. I'm not interested in your struggles or tears. I just want to know where did it fall. Here the man of God is asking for the immediate. Here the man of God is asking for a pointer that will help us understand our immediate context. And he asked a simple question, where did it fall? And the Bible simply says, he showed him the way the minute. I have learned that the reason why when we are sick, we don't start at a pharmacy, but we start at a doctor, is so that we can find a proper <laughs> diagnosis. I realize that the job of physicians, it is uh, to help us identify where it has fallen. For you can have all the pharmacy as you want it. But when we do not know where it has fallen, we cannot help you, sir. We cannot help you, madam. The man of God is asking, where, is it, is it, where did it fall? There is somebody who is sitting on their secret of life, and they are saying, I will die like this, I will not say it. You see, my friend, God is not unto man. With God, you can tell him everything. He is asking today, where did, it, where did it fall? Perhaps there is an aborted baby that your family does not know about. With God, there, is, there are no secrets, my friends. You can talk to him, you can tell him in secret, this is where it falls. We see that you are losing your weight. We see that you have lost your skin texture. We, have, we see that you are losing it all. I know there are things we can't tell people in words. You see, people are limited even in what they can hear. But with God, we can tell him everything. And the King Herald sing a beautiful song. How long has it been since you knelt beside your bed and you told God everything? I'm encouraging you today, my friend, to open your heart wherever you are and tell God, God, this is where it fell. I'm encouraging you, my friend, find your closet today. Uh, don't uh, run around. Uh, don't be afraid. Neither shy away from this, but in your secret place, please tell God where it fell. And the man of God came, and he threw a stick. And the Bible says, and this is the miracle, that the stick sunk and an iron exit began to float. I did not understand what type of stick is this, the one that is heavier than a matter. 
until I understood that sin came through a tree. And we are in trouble today. We are losing our ex heads because of sin. We are losing our mojo. We are losing our cutting edge. We are losing our strength because of the sin problem that has befallen us. Until I understood that God said to Moses, what is it that you have in your hand? And he said, a stick. And God said, throw, throw, throw it down. When he threw it down, it became a snake. When he grabbed it by the tail, it became a stick again. The question the preacher is asking, what type of stick was it that was in the hands of Moses? I don't have time to tell you about the tree of Jonah that came out of nowhere. It grew immediately and it cut all the processes of nature. But while it, the Bible is clear, that while under that tree and Jonah became proud, a simple worm came and ate up a tree and it disappeared. I still ask, what type of tree is this? What type of tree that stick of Moses was cut from? The one that hits a rock and water comes out. The one when pointed into the Red Sea, there is a way where there seems to be no way. Until I understood from a simple song that God built a tree so that we might grow free. Until I understood that the stick we are talking about represents the cross of Jesus Christ. That no matter how deep your problem is, when you throw Jesus into your problem, all solution becomes available. Until I understood that when Jesus becomes your only solution, you have all the solutions in the world. Until I understood that whatever disease that is in your veins, with Jesus in the vessel, you can smile at the storm. Until I understood that when Jesus comes into any equation, it balances out. Until I understood that the name of Jesus can provide food on the table. That the name of Jesus can provide protection that bodyguards cannot give you. That the name of Jesus has taken out people from rolling cars. That the name of Jesus was able, when the doctors had given up on you, Jesus was able to save you and keep you safe. And then I knew that in Jesus' name we are able to find salvation. Today I want to invite you as you look into your heart and you have a conversation with God. I understand you have a cry like the young man, that, but I know that my ex has fallen into the river, but he was there, he was watching. And perhaps you are wondering, when we die like flies because of COVID-19, when we die like flies because of HIV and AIDS, when cancer is ravaging us, when all these things have become ills and they have made our lives to even become more difficult. Where is the peace like a river? Where is this God who cares for us? And while you get to that point, my answer is simple, that he is there all the time. You need to remember, he never allows that which we cannot bear. But today the invitation is simple. Let's have a conversation with him one more, once more. In simple faith, give God your problem and let us see if it will not solve it for you. In simple faith, instead of crying all, all night long, maybe this time let us pause into the night and pray until they break. In simple faith, maybe let us pause all. Let us not update our social media status, but go back to Jesus on our knees and let us ask him to intervene. I want to pray with someone today who says, Lord, there are things I cannot tell my spouse. Lord, there are things that I cannot disclose to the church. There are things that I, I cannot share with friends. There are things I'm uncomfortable. I'm so ashamed to align myself with them, but they are true about my life. The man of God wants to know where did it fall. But more so, he wants to fix your problem. The porter wants to put you back together again. The potter wants to pick up your broken pieces so that he can put you back together again. I understand that we are so broken. Our cup of faith is so empty that when you tilt it, nothing drops. But I'm asking you today in simple faith, if you are in the reach of my voice, give God yet another chance in your life and let him see you through. I know that you are heading, your marriage is heading through the rocks. I know that you are about to commit suicide and I ask you to stop in Jesus' name. 
I understand that you have given up and you are giving in. But today I'm asking you, let us try Jesus once more. Let us see that this shelter in the times of storm, can it take us out of this? And the answer is yes. Simply because he cares and his touch, his heart is touched with your grief. I'd like you to take your prayer position right now. I'd like to invite you to make yourself comfortable as we seek God in prayer. I'd like you to present your problem in Jesus' name. If you want to raise your hand, you are welcome to do so. If you want to lay prostrate on the ground, that is okay. But if you are sitting and you are comfortable, that is also okay. I want you to give your heart right now. If you have been far from Jesus, this is the time to come back to you. If you have given up, this is the time to try him again. If you are feeling like you cannot trust him. If you are feeling like there isn't enough evidence. There are not enough gifts of faith in your life to make you try him. I challenge you. I dare you trust Jesus again. I know that he will see you through. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for life. We thank you for all that you have done for us on this Sabbath. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for meeting us right at our point of need. I thank you, Father, because this message comes at the right time when somebody had packed their bags and they were about to walk out of that house. And today you are saying to them, before you leave, come to Jesus. I thank you, Father, because you've sent us a timely message today that before we wait for our results and our status from the doctors, we can look into our lives and allow Jesus to give us the right diagnosis. I ask, Father, that in the name of Jesus, you give us a reason to hold on to you again. I ask, Father, that you may help us retrieve our lost access. I pray, Father, that you may help us retrieve our cutting edge. I ask, Father, that you may give us, you may return our joy back to us. Some of us have been surviving so much we have forgotten how to live. Some of us wake up every day and there is no hope that our life will be different. But in the name of Jesus today I ask that that stick that was thrown into the river and the earth said flew. I ask Heavenly Father that it may be dipped into our lives today. I ask that the power in the name of Jesus may come into my marriage. I ask that it may come into my Health, I ask that it may come into my career, it may come into my business. I ask that it may come into my education. I ask that you come into my life, you come into my family. We invite you, Father, to come back and that your presence may be felt among us. We ask, Heavenly Father, that as you go about this Holy Sabbath, blessing your children that you may remember us also. Our song in our heart is, Come by here, Lord, come by here, Lord, come by here is that as you bless your children around the world, also come around this place. Come to our lives and here make a difference. Uh, somebody is in doubt, I ask that you give them gifts of faith so that they may grow and know how to trust you. I pray for them. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly more than we ask or even we can imagine or whatever it is that has never even crossed our mind, that we will give our lives yet once more into your care. We pray, Father, that you may accept us. And through this prayer, we also ask for healing in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that your hand, your extended hand of healing and love and grace may be felt among us who hear your word today. In Jesus' name, we pray for you.